Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Monday. I'm so fired up about today's show that I, let's just chop, 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 diddly dop. Let's go. We can wait till six, six o'clock for fish at six and away to go. Item by item by item. Straight dope. <laughs> no bulge. Uh, winter style, which you can, of course, get at uh, you can see the code right below at the Uncle Fish store. I am Mike Fisher, your trusty and trusted reporter. This isn't the fishbowl. This is, oh, no. but the, the star is right. There. This is the fishbowl on wheels. The star is right there. And we spent the day at the star. And yes, a lot of Jerry judgment jubilation uh, at the star today here in Frisco. We will walk you through all of it. Straight dope, no bullshit. If you give me, this can be crisp. Because uh, family. In fact, I have the uh, I have the grand grandsons uh, are rolling into town. So, um, you know, with all due respect to my uh, affection for you, pish posh. So give me 14 minutes and I'll give you the cowboy world. We'll go item by item by item. Ding, item. Max, CBS sucks. Why'd they go off to the game? You're not wrong. Here's where they're wrong. And what'd they switch to? The Bengal blah, blah. There's no way that CBS's TV audience went up when they switched from a Cowboy blowout to a Bengals game. There's no way. So just in a business sense, in, in addition to you being uh, mad and offended, that was a bad business decision. Ding. Uh Joel, I'm seeing a lot of stuff about Sam Williams today, and the stuff is right. Now, long, long, long list of guys, uh, front seven guys who didn't get it done the right way in Green Bay. And so now let's make a long, long, long list of guys who did get it done in terms of do your job in this game. And Dan Quinn, Mike McCarthy, and Micah Parsons all deserve a great deal of credit for getting this thing steered in the right direction. Randy Hoffman, $25 pitch in into the brief fund. Happy birthday, Troy Aikman. Uh, Troy, by the way, his uh, sainted mother passed away a couple of days ago. And I did have uh, a conversation with him about that. When he first came to Dallas, of course, he had Lee Steinberg as his agent, but he had, he had his mom as his, uh, what Marsha calls a momager. Get it? Troy's mom was his momager. She handled the mail and the finances and all this stuff. Remember now, this is pre-internet. And um, so, yeah, she, she was, she was uh, a, a wonderful, positive force in his life. And not unlike a lot of us um, with our parents, she was the sweet one and dad was the other one. For Troy, uh, and, and I, and again, we, a lot of us has lived that, and I mean that in the sweetest way. She was a sweet one, and Dad was the other one. That's a fact. Uh, all good. So, um, yeah. Also, happy birthday, ding, to Brett Maher. He's thirty-three today, and boy, oh boy, does he get to celebrate. Item, ding, fish. We've. Uh, just as Joey Stewart. Joey Stewart, friend of the show, smart guy. We've got to pay Tony Pollard. Wonk, wonk. Not $12.6 million, you don't. That would not be wise. The NFL is turning back to a running league. You, you, you're mentioning the Chiefs, and you watched last night's game, and you think this is a running league? Patrick Mahomes throws four touchdown passes every game. And they're the scariest team in football and maybe the best team in football. They're certainly the best offense in football. The tight end catches two touchdown passes every game. No, no, I'm not quite there with you. Uh, injury update, Ding, for today. Uh, Micah says he's fine and Big Mike says Micah's fine. That's kind of important. We did the video on it earlier today about Micah saying, that was a pain that I've never felt before. Kind of in his knee, gets rolled up on by everybody in Minnesota. 
And what he's saying is the instantaneous pain is something I'd never felt before, but it's not a lingering issue. Um, the way we understand it, Michael Parsons, uh, we had a walkthrough today here at the Star. Michael Parsons did participate. And in fact, guess what? Uh, knee and ankle. Now, Big Mike said he was going to participate in the walkthrough. But officially, it's a DNP for Micah. What? I'm not too worried. Let me rattle through this. Anthony Barr did not participate. Basham did not participate. Diggs got a little bit of an ankle thing. He was full today. Zeke, knee, limited, same old deal. Um, there isn't a, an illness bug going through the building today. Uh, I'm going to make sure I uh, wash my hands and I'll stop there because somebody's going to start bringing up who they voted for. Hankins, illness. Fowler, illness. Kelvin, illness. Tank, now I got something in my eye. That's my illness. Uh, tank with the foot did not practice. Get used to that. He might have he might have the tiniest little refracture of his fractured foot. He might have a broken foot. So uh, Tank Lawrence not practicing on a short week. Get used to it. Uh, Osa with a knee limited, and then we mentioned Micah in New York. By the way, again, um, this is a game of attrition. Whoever, whoever can have like 11 guys stay upright might get to win. Um, their most key guy, Saquon Barkley, is not on the injury list. Good. The tight end, Dan Daniel Bellinger, who's been pretty good for them, did not participate today. He was one of six guys who did not practice. And Dory Jackson, the cornerback, also did not with a knee. Daniel Bellinger didn't practice today because he's got an eye injury. What? Ding. Speaking of New York, friend of the show, Jordan Lewis, and he's out for the season. That's too bad. He's got nothing better to do. Uh, so he's sitting on the couch on Sunday and he's watching the television and he's got, you know, NFL Sunday ticket, red zone, whatever he's got. And he's waiting. The Jets were uh, the Jets Patriots was a noon game, right? I think so. So he's watching Jets Patriots and he's watching the Jets. They can't, they can't score. Patriots, by the way, might have the best defense in football. They also have in uh, Matthew Juden, a, a pass rusher who's right there uh, in a battle with your guy, Micah. They can't score at three points. So in the post game, uh, Zach Wilson, the young you know, next Joe Namath, because they always are in New York. He's asked on the podium, do you feel like you let down the defense? After all, they held Bill Belichick to three points before. I mean, that's all he scored. They held the Bill Belichick offense to three points. Do you feel like you let the Jets defense down? And he goes just like this. No. There's my imitation of Zach Wilson. Except he's adorable. No. No. And then he walked away. Oh, man. Do you not understand what city you're working in, son? This is New York City. You're going to get roasted. And I haven't even checked. I don't want to check. I, 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 I feel bad for him. Roasted. No. We didn't really score any points. We didn't really complete any passes. We didn't really. But no, it's not. I mean, not, not my fault. Oh, my gosh. So the Patriots, once again, have destroyed the Jets. They're done. There's now infighting in that locker room because defensive players are going, you sons of bitch, you SOB, what? And our guy, Jordan Lewis, decided to pitch in. He got nothing better to do. He's sitting on the couch. So he tweets at the kid going, you don't think you're responsible for this? And then it was a subtweet with a video that showed all his mistakes. A couple of star, including uh, Sauce Gordon, uh, Sauce uh, Gardner, a couple of standout defensive players for the Jets hit like on Jordan Lewis's tweet, meaning, yes, Jordan Lewis, get him. And then in the locker room today in New York, media asked uh, Sauce and some other guys, Did you, you hit like? Oh, no, it, it was an accident. I, I, my elbow accidentally, really, 
Uh, the dog uh, ate my homework. Uh, I got five flat tires. I, uh, oh boy, Jets done. If you are a gambling man, I'm not. If you are a gambling man and you can find some way to bet that the Jets are done, please do that. And Jordan Lewis, interestingly, was a contributing factor to it all. Dean Graham, poor kid done opened a can of worms he shouldn't have touched. Listen, this is CEO of a football team stuff, but this is also New York. Um, and this is something that Dak's very good at. Aiken was very good at it. Tony. The, the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, you are, the, you are the assistant CEO of a billion dollar corporation and you got to tie your tie right. And you got to understand which one of those things is the salad fork. Right. The wide receiver or the running back can go to the gas station in his pajama bottoms, barefoot with no shirt. Zeke. The CEO of a billion dollar company cannot go to the gas station in Frisco in pajama bottoms, flip flops and no shirt. And that, that and, and that gets it. And Aikman got it. And Staubach obviously got it. And if you don't get it, and you're the quarterback in New York, if you don't get it, boy, are you going to get it. D.B. Cooper, I don't care about the Jets. Pish posh. It's all one big bundle. My young friend, my young Padawan. Mike McCarthy opened up his press conference today here at the Star, saying, uh, asked about, you know, Super Bowl talk, because Jerry, he goes, well, the general manager, I, I talked to the general manager He's very clever. And, and what McCarthy's saying is the general manager of the Cowboys understands that this is brick by brick, day by day, piece by piece, quarter by quarter, game by game. The general manager understands that. But the marketing-minded owner of the Dallas Cowboys, Super Bowl! It's perfectly fine to talk about Super Bowl after that. It's perfectly fine. Do you think, let me ask you this. Had the Vikings won, if the Vikings were 9-1 and one today and they had taken down America's team and they too had watched TV and watched PU, the Packers stink. PU, the Bears aren't good enough. PU, the Lions aren't good enough. You don't think the Vikings today, if they were 9-1, and one, would, would be talking about Super Bowl? Of course they would. That's okay. So, the cop, listen, Jerry's been talking about the Super Bowl almost every year for 32 years. Nobody should be freaked out at, uh, about it. And I give Big Mike credit for it for not being freaked out about it. It's okay. It's good. It's realistic. I just put together, and somebody said today, go back and look at the Cowboys versus the Colts from, not, from a few years ago as a kind of perfect game. I'm fascinated. I can't wait to talk to um, guys on the coaching staff. Like, what's everybody's grades for that game? How did everybody grade out? Did did anybody have a bad game? Brian Anger had to take off his ball cap one time. That was too bad for him. Is there anybody in the Cowboys that graded out poorly? Again, layman, I watch film. By the way, this is a bad, I got a million comments on this today. Straight dope, no bullshit. People get it. Jeff L., I need that sweater, sweatshirt. Uh, I was going to point, I've done this so often, I point right there. It's not right there, it's right below though. You can go into the Uncle Fish store and go get yourself one. It's pretty, pretty sweet. The perfect game. Following up on, ding, the perfect trade. Uh, if you're a person of a certain age, you remember the Herschel heist. And how fun is it to watch? Although Seattle is good. And I mean, you might, Seattle, the Seahawks are good. And that's not good in the NFC. That's not good for you. But it's really fun to watch the Russell Wilson thing collapse in Denver just because it's so 
soap operatic. And in Seattle, they're talking about this is like the Herschel trade. We got two ones. We got two two. Now, it's never going to be like the Herschel trade. Because the Herschel trade was uniquely structured. And I think this was Jimmy, both J and J and J and J want to take credit for the whole thing. And they both deserve credit for the overall thing. But I think it was Jimmy that came up with the idea that, well, we're going to take some picks and we're going to take some players. Dante Costa. Hey, Fish, how do I, I become an Uncle Fish premium member? Ask the fellas. They'll show you how. Really easy, to, uh, much easier to do on your laptop than on your phone. Ask the fellas. They'll show you how. If you're old enough to remember this, then, then you know this. The Cowboys engineer deal where we'll take pick, 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 pick. And then, oh, by all means, we want Jesse Solomon. And then a wrinkle was added. Jesse Solomon, Isaac Holt, uh, Darren Nelson. We'll take those players too. But if we cut those players, we get another pick. Well, Mike Lynn of Minnesota got hoodwinked and bamboozled. He's like, why would you? You guys are terrible. You'd never cut Jesse Solomon. You'd never cut, I think, Darren Nelson. And they did not cut Isaac Holt. He did stay around. You'd never cut. Well, then the Cowboys did. So they got pick, 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 pick. And then they cut, got cut, got a pick, 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 pick. And the next thing you know, you get pup, you get Emmett, you get, I believe, Woodson, and on and on and on and on. You you built a three-time Super Bowl winning roster off one player. And, of course, Herschel went to Minnesota. And I understand their logic. They thought they were one player away. They get Herschel. He never fit. He's an unusual guy, but I mean he never fit into the what they were doing offensively didn't fit. They went to the playoffs that year. He played two more years there. They didn't, and they went like six and 10. They, they didn't go to the playoffs again. Terrible. Now look at what Denver has done. They gave up the whole shooting match and they thought they were going to be good. And they're, I think they're three and seven. They're terrible. And they gave up all their picks for this. They're probably going to fire their coach. Uh, Hackett, friend of McCarthy, by the way, sorry. Um, there will never be another Herschel heist, but uh, good for you, Seattle. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Item. Uh, rumors floating about that Matthew Stafford, who of course went to high school with my wife, Marsha, kinda, um, that the retirement is in the air. He got his ring. They're beating the hell out of him. They're not very good. And I can see it. Item. Uh, Kyle Pitts goes down, and uh, that's a knee injury in Atlanta, and they've put him on IR. That's a team. I mean, is Atlanta really, like, contender, contender? No, but they could win that division. Frankly, if you're the Viking, if you're the Cowboys, would you like to play Atlanta in the playoffs? Yeah, I think. Kenneth Easley, fish, you're too popular. The bots are coming for you now that you're 60,000 fish heads. Yeah, we're right short of 60,000 fish heads. Isn't that something? Item. And I'll close with this because I said we'd do 20 minutes and here we are. The odds makers last week said the Cowboys should be favored by two. I guess. Oh, yes, uh, Stephen M. Hey, would you please hit the uh, like button? That's the thumbs up. It tells Cowboy Nation that we're doing something special here. And it bypasses the laws of YouTube. So would 13 people, that's a little ass, 13 people, please hit the like button. And if at the end of this uh, award-winning program, if you find this to be entertaining and uh, informative information, some of it exclusive, exclusive, would you please subscribe to what we do here as we try to get to 60,000 fish heads in Cowboy Nation by Christmas? Cowboys were favored by two. And uh, many of us, including me, 
wondered about that. In the end, I picked the Cowboys by two, but I, I, I didn't put any money on it. I just put my uh, stupid bad looks on it. Here come the gents. Cowboys favored by seven and a half. Do the odds makers know something here? <laughs> I, I think the odds makers might be onto something. Uh, the Giants are coming off a loss at home. They were not unable to leash Saquon Barkley. They still don't have a threat at, at, at receiver or tight end. They don't have any, they have Saquon Barkley. That's what they have. And if you remember the Cowboys win at MetLife earlier this year, and of course I was there, Cooper Rush was good enough to beat them then. Thanksgiving, we'll be there. If you can't be in the building with us, will you be with us here? The Fish Report, we're all over it. As you see today, we've got, what do we got? Uh, six videos or something today from Inside the Star and all the rest. And then CowboysSI.com. I believe uh, we published 12 Cowboys stories today. If a blade of grass moves over there at the star, we are on it. And we appreciate you being on it with us. Fish out.